Okay. And thereupon Methuselah went and summoned to him all his brothers and assembled his relatives. And he spake unto all the children of righteousness and said, Hear ye sons of Enoch, all the words of your father, and hearken aright to the voice of my mouth. For I exhort you and say unto you, Beloved, love uprightness and walk therein, and draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart, and associate not with those of a double heart. <laughs> I, just, I like that again. I'm going to read that. It says, Love uprightness and walk therein, and draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart, and associate not with those of a double heart. God had stated, and I've taught on it, no man can serve two masters, and I've taught on it in other videos, um, mediocrity equals hell. God wants you on one side or the other. He don't want you wishy-washy. He wants you singular with him, serving him, or go serve the devil and be singular with him, singularly focused. No, not none of this strat on the fence type of stuff. God don't like. He said that throughout his word. Why halt ye between two opinions? Elijah said, if the Lord be Lord, serve him, and Baal, serve him. And he said the same thing here. Uh, Book of James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But walk in, up in righteousness, my sons, and it shall abide, or it shall guide you on good paths, and righteousness shall be your companion. For I know that the violence must increase on the earth, and great chastisement must be executed on the earth, and all unrighteousness shall come to an end. That's going to happen. God's going to have the last word. And light's going to win out in the end over the darkness. I said it a million times. You don't think so, just turn a light bulb on and see who wins that war. And unrighteousness shall come to an end. Yea, it shall be cut off from its roots. And its whole structure be destroyed. There won't be a sign of it left when God get through. That you even had any darkness. All sin will be, a, the memory of it will be, the record of it will be white clean. And unrighteousness shall again be consumed, or excuse me, shall again be consummated on the earth. And all the deeds of unrighteousness and of violence and transgression shall prevail in a twofold degree. And when sin and unrighteousness and blasphemy and violence in all kinds of deeds increase, and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase. A great chastisement shall come from heaven upon all these. And the Holy Lord will come forth with wrath and chastisement. God only lets it go far so far, the wickedness go so far. Remember, after he destroys the earth here and the flood, he had to turn around and wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah and its. It's five sister cities. Well, it's five cities all together. He rained fire down on them. He said I wouldn't do it with water, so <laughs> that's proof positive God keeps his word. But he wiped out millions of people not long after the flood. God let you go so far for his rebellion and sin until it reaches a boiling point, and then heaven deals with it. Or any kingdom to get out of line too far with tyranny and unrighteousness. God brings judgment on them. You see that throughout the Bible. Well, Nebuchadnezzar is a great example of that. And in those days, violence shall be cut off from its roots, and the roots of unrighteousness together with deceit. And they shall be destroyed from under heaven, and all the idols of the heathen shall be abandoned and the temples burn with fire, and they shall remove them from the whole earth, and they, the heathen, shall be cast into the judgment of fire, and shall perish in wrath and in grievous judgment forever. 
and righteousness shall arise from their sleep, and wisdom shall arise and be given unto them. And after that, the roots of unrighteousness shall be cut off, and sinners shall be destroyed by the sword, shall be cut off from the blasphemers in every place. And those who plain, those who plan, excuse me, violence, and those who commit blasphemy shall perish by the sword. You got to watch what you say against God and His kingdom. You got a lot of blasphemers in today's world going around saying, screw God and such, 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 and such, and such. God hears. He made the ear. They'll get theirs. They will be screwed in. <laughs> it should be cut off from the blasphemers in every place, and those who plan violence, and those who commit blasphemy shall perish by the sword. And now I tell you, my sons, and show you the paths of righteousness and the paths of violence. Yea, I will show them to you again, that you may know what will come to pass. And now hearken unto me, my sons, and walk in the paths of righteousness, and walk not in the paths of violence. For all who walk in the paths of unrighteousness shall perish forever. And after that Enoch both gave and began to recount from the books. And Enoch said concerning the children of righteousness and concerning the elect of the world and concerning the plant of uprightness, I will speak these things. Yea, Enoch will declare them unto you, my sons, according to that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision, and which have I known throughout the word of the holy angels, and have learnt from the heavenly tablets. And Enoch began to recount from the books and said, I was born the seventh in the first week, while judgment and righteousness still endured. And after me there shall arise in the second week great wickedness, and deceit shall have sprung up, and in it there shall be the first end, and in it a man shall be saved, and after it is ended, unrighteousness shall grow up, and a law shall be made for sinners. He's giving you, he just basically said, he's talking about he's recounting from his day of birth that wickedness arose on the earth, dealing with the giants. God was going to wipe them out in the flood. And uh, through his descendant, Noah, that was, you know, the man would be saved. And he said his wickedness is going to start over again after Noah which it did under Nimrod and his bunch and the Tower of Babel and all that and the false occultic satanic religion that was born out of Nimrod, Samirimus, and Tammuz and the evil that sprung up from there. He said that was going to happen and lawlessness was going to, going to start over. And a law shall be made for sinners, talking about Moses. And <clears throat> And the law and some outside. And after that, in the third week of its close, a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous, righteous judgment. And his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore, Christ Jesus. And after that, in the fourth week, as its close, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen. And a law for all generations and an enclosure shall be made for them. And after that, the fifth week, as it closed, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. And after that, the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded. And the hearts of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom. And in it a man shall ascend. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. And the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and its deeds shall be apostate. And as its close shall be elected, the elect righteous of the eternal plan of the righteousness, to receive sevenfold instructions concerning all this creation. 
for for who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the Holy One without being troubled? And who can think his thoughts? And who is there that can behold all the works of heaven? And how should there be one who could behold the heaven? And who is there that could understand the things of heaven and see a soul and see a soul of all their spirits and think them or do or do like them and who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and the length of the earth and to whom has it been shown the measure of all them or is there anyone who could discern the length of heaven and how great is his height and upon what is it founded See, what's holding heaven up? Who built him? Who knows the dimensions of the earth and everything? God. He said the very hairs of your head are numbered. He's so detailed. He knows all the stars, the exact number of them, and know them by name. It's a great God we serve. And glory be his name. And how great is the number of the stars and where all the luminaries rest? And after that, there shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. And a sword shall be given to it that righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors. And sinners shall be delivered into the hand of the righteous. And at its close, they shall acquire houses through their righteousness. And a house shall be built for the great king in glory forevermore. And all mankind shall look to the path of uprightness. And after that, in the ninth week, the righteous judgment shall be revealed to the whole world. And all the works of the godless shall vanish from all the earth. And the world shall be written down for destruction. I was going to wipe it out one day. All you tree huggers and earth people say the earth God's going to destroy the earth this is earth read Psalm 51 if you don't think so he tells you there do what he wants with and the world should be written down for destruction and after this in the tenth week in the seventh part there shall be a great eternal judgment in which he will execute vengeance amongst the angels and the first heaven shall depart and pass away, and a new heaven shall appear. God's going to wipe this out and start over. Keep telling. It tells you in Revelation. Uh, the, end of the, the end of the book, I think it's 19, 17 and 19. And all the powers of heaven shall give sevenfold light. And after that, there will be many weeks without number forever. And all shall be in goodness and righteousness. And sin shall no more be mentioned forever. Rebellion is done away with. Everybody know God's the boss in heaven? It's yes, sir. And those that wanted to serve themselves or serve anything but God has their chance to do it now and follow their father below into the lake of fire and the fallen angels that go with him. And those that surrender their will willfully to God will forever live with Him in eternal peace, joy, and happiness after going through the trials and tribulations of the God of this world's earth to get there. That's why the Bible says that we're the glory in tribulation knowing what, I, what the end result's going to be anyway. We're going to rule and reign with Christ in the end. That's what this trip's about. You we have to recognize yourself as pilgrims or strangers down here passing through. This is going to be done away with. So you better fixate yourself on God's word and not what you see. That's what faith is. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is all that you see here, God created, and he's going to destroy it one day. So build your hopes on his word. That's what faith is. That's what we read Enoch about. Now, if this don't line up with the Bible, I don't know what book it is. This is more the Bible than most of the books in here. You got some books like Esther. Books like that they could have taken out. I like Esther. I think it should be left in, but I'm just saying. The Psalm of Solomon, those type of books. James, for sure. Even uh, Martin Luther says a story little epistle should be story little epistle that should be taken out. And they, but they took Enoch out. And as you got to hear, if you followed Enoch from beginning to end, you see it lines up perfectly with the scriptures. And, and then some. And now I say unto you, my sons, love righteousness and walk therein. For the paths of the righteous are worthy of acceptation. But the paths of the uprightness shall suddenly be destroyed and vanished. And to a certain men of generation shall the paths of violence and of death be revealed. And they shall hold themselves afar from them and shall not follow them. And now I say unto you, the righteous, walk not in the paths of wickedness, nor in the paths of death, and draw not nigh to them, lest ye be destroyed. But seek ye and choose for yourselves righteousness, and elect life, and walk in the paths of peace, and ye shall live and prosper. And hold fast to my words in the thoughts of your hearts, and suffer them not to be effaced from your hearts. For know that sinners will tempt men evilly and treat them. For know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom, so that no place may be found for her, and no manner of temptation may minish. Woe to those who build unrighteousness and oppression and lay deceit as a foundation. For they shall be suddenly overthrown, and they shall have no place. Woe to those who build their houses with sin. You see all the evil men that evilly gotten gain through many crimes they've committed. God sees it's like a straw hut house that's in the pathway of a tornado. It's not going to last. That's what God is saying. Bolder them to build their houses with sin. For from all their foundations shall they be overthrown, and by the sword shall they fall. And those who acquire gold and silver in judgment shall suddenly perish. Woe to you. Ye rich, for ye have trusted in your riches. I'll give my teaching on the, the rich young ruler, the rich fool. <laughs> it's so true. You, Bible said when riches increase, set not your heart on them. It's nothing with, with wealth in its place, but don't let its place take the place of God. That's what usually happens. If wealth becomes your God, mammon. And you start serving mammon instead of the God of riches, instead of God the creator. And from your riches shall ye depart, because ye have not remembered the Most High in the days of your riches. Ye have committed blasphemy and unrighteousness, and have become ready for the day of slaughter. And the day of darkness, and the day of the great judgment, thus shall I speak and declare unto you, he who have created you shall overthrow you and for your fall there shall be no compassion God's not going to have the day of mercy is over well, I, we done read a lot of Enoch and the judgment, the great white throne judgment, the judgment seat of Christ there's no compassion them days are over now you get to see what the scripture says when it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God who's going to save you from it 
I'm very much I'm well aware daily what God is capable of. He done showed me already. I don't need another hellish experience. I got it. Yes, sir. But some of you, you're going to die in your sin and find out the hard way. And it's too late. Too late to make supplications. Too late to beg and say, I'm sorry. Give me one more chance. Once you die, you're frozen in sin. That's it. For those of us that he that had death experiences or near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences that seen hell and what it could be or felt it, like me, I took a tour of the place. I know what it feels like to go there. We don't want to go back. We understand. It's, yes, sir. I mean, you can Google terrorists that been there that was jihadists that turned around and are preaching the gospel after a trip to hell. <laughs> I don't care how hard you think you are, how tough, how rough and tough a man you think you are. That'll humble you just, just a couple of seconds of roasted in there. You'll get it. Yes, sir, God. You'll be on your knees bowing to him. I guarantee you. And people mock and make fun and say that, and some have to feel it to believe it. You will. You, 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 you'll feel it. And the day of darkness and the day of the great judgment, thus I will speak and declare unto you, he who hath created you will overthrow you, and for your fall there should be no compassion, and your creator will rejoice at your destruction. God says that throughout the Bible. Especially in the Psalms, read it where he's rejoicing over the destruction of the wicked in the in the day of judgment. Because all that terror that they meted out to God's people on this earth and the martyrs and the torture they've done, now it's their turn to be tortured, and now you get to see their fear and their fright, and God's laughing. He's rejoicing in it. He who has the last laughs, he who has the last laugh, laughs, laughs the longest. Says saying or something like that. Thus I will speak and declare unto you, who have created you and will overthrow you. And for your fall there should be no compassion. And your creator will rejoice in your destruction. And your righteous ones in those days shall be a reproach to the sinners and the godless. Oh, that mine eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you, and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters, that so I might rest my trouble of heart, who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness. And so judgment shall overtake you, sinners. Fear not, sinners, ye righteous, for again will the Lord deliver them into your hands that ye may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. Woe to you who fulminate anathemas, which cannot be reversed. Those are curses, fomenting curses, which shall not be reversed. Healing shall therefore be far from you because of your sins. Talking like sorcery and witchcraft. Woe to you who requite your neighbor with evil. For shall ye be requited according to your works. Woe to you, lying witnesses, bearing false witness. That's one of the laws God got in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy name. In these days and in these times, there's a lot of bearing of false witness going on. Especially dealing with uh, the state and politicians. It's all over television, bearing false witness. News media, bearing false witness. Deweyism has captured the church and everything else. The schools, the government, Deweyism, lying and bearing false witness. Woe unto you, lying witnesses, and those who weigh, weigh out injustice, no justice, just us pretty much now in these court systems. You're not going to get no justice unless you got a lot of money to pay for it. I mean, Lady Justice now, with her blindfold on, has a price tag hanging out of her ass. You better be able to afford it. 
Woe unto you, requite your neighbor with evil, for ye shall be requited according to your works. Woe to you, lying witnesses, and those who weigh out injustice, for suddenly ye shall perish. Woe to you, sinners, for ye persecute the righteous, for ye shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice. Ain't that what's going on now? Especially if you're a Christian, how you persecuted in today's world for being one with the evildoers that's running things. He says, woe unto you. You're going to get yours. Don't worry. For ye shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice. Ain't that what Jesus said? They lied on him. They framed him, quote unquote. They gave him injustice for us. His rights being violated, not a proper trial. They bore false witness on him and executed him on top of him, behind those false charges. Woe unto them. And woe unto them that's followed in their paths ever since. And all the, all the apostles, as well as the early Christian church world, there was rights that were violated and the injustices that they suffered throughout the centuries, the Inquisition, all the way until the present day now with uh, Islamic terrorism running rampant and killing Christians and persecuting in Middle Eastern countries and uh, even in European in America. The persecution is going on with the righteous, the Christians, people of faith. Nothing new under the sun. It says, Woe. Woe unto you sinners, for ye persecute the righteous. For ye shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice. And heavy shall its yoke be up on you. Be hopeful, ye righteous, for suddenly shall the sinners perish before you. They're going to get their day. God's going to have the last word with unjust people. He's going to, they're going to get punished. They're going to have it doled out to them and God's going to laugh. So for you that are discouraged in your Christian life, your Christian walk, and being persecuted, cheer up, saints. It's going to get worse. <laughs> but don't worry. You know what the end result will be. And in the day of tribulation of sinners, your children shall mount and rise as eagles. I love this verse. That's right out of Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 56. 56, uh, 3 or 8. Not a, I can't remember. It's been a while. But it says, you, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as, as wings as eagles. They should run and not be weary. They should walk and not, not faint. Or it could be Isaiah 40. I don't know. I, I used to go rattle these verses getting old. Man. Might be Isaiah 40 something. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wherefore, fear not, ye that suffered, for healing shall be your portion, and a bright light shall enlighten you, and the voice of rest ye shall hear from the heaven. The Bible said, let us labor to get in that rest. Not sit around like a praying man. Saying God and praying for God to do everything, you have to do your part. You have to get active. You have to be in action, Jackson. Prayer is good in its place. The prayer without faith works is dead. God expects you to do your part to hold back this this man of sin, this Antichrist government. The spirit of the Antichrist is trying to take away your freedom. To push back, church. Wherefore, fear not, ye that have suffered, for healing shall be your portion, and bright light shall enlighten you, and the voice of rest ye shall hear from the heaven. Woe unto ye sinners, for ye riches have made you appear like the righteous, because they can give to charity. And, and, you know, so there's a lot of that scams, too. But they can dole money out here and make themselves look good. But what they're doing on the back end, God sees, has to get those that money. <laughs> you know, 
some of the biggest scam artists in the in the world in history and nonprofits to do it from. That's what he's saying. But your hearts woe unto you, ye sinners, for your riches make you appear like righteous. But your hearts convict you of being sinners. And this fact shall be a testimony against you, for for memorial of your evil deeds. Woe to you who devour the finest of wheat, and drink wine in large bowls, and tread underfoot the lowly with your might. Woe to you who drink water from every fountain. You greedy. You want to swallow up everything. For suddenly shall be consumed and wither away, because ye have forsaken the water of life. Woe to you who work unrighteousness and deceit and blasphemy. It shall be a memorial against you for evil. Woe to you, ye mighty. Think this is what Christ said. I'll remember all his woe. Woe to you, Pharisee. Woe to you. All the woes Christ gave. And, uh, I think it's Matthew's. Matthew uh, 22, something like that. 20, 22. All the woes he gave. Woe to ye mighty. Another place where a lot of woes are is in uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. See, so read all the woes God said here. Woe is not something good to hear from God. Woe to you, mighty. Woe with might oppress the righteous, for the day of your destruction is coming. Don't worry about what's going on in today's world with these evil banksters and these evil men that's doing evil and trying to swallow the whole world and make it out in the image of their master, their father below. God sees and turn us into chattel slaves in their godless kingdom. God see. In those days, many and good days shall come to the righteous in the day of your judgment. Believe ye righteous, 